All right, I have here a six ton press and also these arrived, these were a tenner, three different sizes. Should be good to pull the pulley off my supercharger so that I can change the oil seal. They, they, the bearings in themselves in the supercharger snout don't actually need changing. However, it's recommended to change the oil seal because if I'm gonna do the work and I've got the bits, I might as well do it. So for a tenner, it was worth it for my time. So the next step is this six ton press, which I think I'm gonna find space for somewhere. <laughs> Let's get going. So this thing here costs 60 quid delivered, which is amazing. I genuinely cannot believe that you can get a six ton shop press delivered. It's like 24 kilos. How, how do you even ship something that heavy, manufactured? And CE marked, I'm assuming it's CE marked, came from the Netherlands, if that means anything. Anyway, I guess we're about to find out. Jack. Once it's under pressure, this might not be wise. I'm not going to put it under pressure because I am not wearing any eye protection. Okay. I think I need to do a bit of research before I start loading this up because that doesn't look safe to me. That could ping off sideways, hit me in the chest, potentially go through my Rib cage, all manner of things. So I'm gonna do some research before I put any load whatsoever on this, because this is six tons, you don't wanna mess with it. I'm gonna need goggles, I'm gonna need uh, gloves. At this height, maybe a gum shield. <laughs> okay, so these are the needle bearings that I need to poke out. Now the first thing I need to do is, there doesn't seem to be any sort of seat for them, so I'm gonna push them out from behind. There doesn't seem to be any seat to push them in. The reason I'm going to push them out from behind is because most of the packages for this supercharger type, actually you don't have access here to the back of them. So you end up having to drill in and you pressurise behind them by squeezing in some crap and then eventually they pop out. <clears throat> so when you're pushing those in, they've got something to push against. But I can't see here really any... I can't see any seat in here to push against. There's plenty of grime, but no real seat. So what I've done is, I've measured in here, so I've taken this, this fella, and I've gone all the way around Pushing down and measuring, and typically I've been getting, you probably can't see that too well, <clears throat> but it's about 1.25, between 1.25 and 1.5, it varies all the way around. Um, so that's what I'm going to base it on. The other way I could do it is measure the back bit. But that's a little bit more complicated because you've got this kind of roundy edge on the back of them and that sort of thing. So I'm going to I'm going to focus on the gap on the inside rather than the outside. So yeah, it's now time to uh, put this on my lovely new press, and uh, I'll punch the first one out and we'll take it from there. We've got ourselves a little 17 mil 
bolt here which can't move anywhere at the bottom fits nicely inside and all I've got to do is get that centrally lined up so that we've got good purchase on there I got myself my goggles protect my lovely eyes and I'm gonna wear gloves even though I'm not sure how they're gonna help That's it. And out it comes. Well, that was remarkably easy. And there we have our old needle bearing. Easily removed. It smells horrible. Lush. Here we have one of my replacement ones. Right here, this is brand new, and here's the old one. There is no lip, there was some dirt which I've cleaned up now, which looked like it might be a lip, but there really is no lip. So you just got to insert it and get it inserted to about the right level. So I've offered the bearing up to the back, like this, just to see if I can press it in from the back because it's easier to access but it doesn't feel good going in that way. It doesn't feel like I can get it to seat properly. However, I'm gonna flip it round like this. I'm gonna drop it in, just in there. It's now sitting there beautifully like it's seated and feels almost straight already so I'm gonna press it in that way because it feels much more positive that way round and I'm pretty sure that's the way that it's designed to go in because all of the other packages will have to go in that way okay so we're now pressed up time for the gloves it's pressing in Okay, I'm going to, for now, release the pressure on that. Oh, bless you. So how did that go? The bearing has gone in quite nicely and obviously straight. It fits, they are the right bearings. It's not fully seated. It wants to go in just a little bit more. I can, and luckily, I can always push it back out if I slightly overcook it. So let's get the press head seated. I think it's called a head, I'm not sure. So that's held in place there now. So now we get that in position there. All right. They press in so easy. I can't work out if that's pressing or not. No, it's not. It's still. So we've got it all lined up. It's in position. Crank it a bit more. Crank. Pushed it in a bit more. I don't know how much further that pushed in. It's almost impossible to tell. So I'm going to pop it all off. This is a bit... An interesting experience okay oh we've got a good seat there we got it just in it's looking pretty good let's get my calipers out and work out what position that's in okay that one came out on half a mil let's see if that's accurate Yeah, it needs to go in more.
Plus, it's very important to try and get this everything straight. That's one of the hardest things, actually, because it's very difficult to tell. Okay. There we go. So another crank. Okay. It moves in kind of chunks. Ready? There we go. Didn't squeak that one. Kind of moves in chunks. I think we may have overdone it that time. It's right in there. Eh, it looks about right, actually. Let's give it a go. One and a half. That's about as bang on as I can get it. And if I need to push it back out a little bit, I can. Let's try the other side. One and a half. So we're exactly one and a half mil in, which is pretty much where I was headed. So let's press out the other one. to put these in and just see okay the rattle seems to have gone I can still hear some metallic scraping of some kind so I'm not sure what to make of that So I've bolted it all back together. I'm not entirely happy. If I spin it, you can hear there's a little bit of play still. I'm just, I'm twizzling the snout end. So it's a thousand times better, but it's still not right. There's still a wibbling. And if I stick my fingers in, It feels like it's more of this end. The movement's much more pronounced at that end, so I think I've got one option, which is to try and it may be that the um, previous needle bearings had actually been slowly forced backwards a little bit and they were no longer holding the end of these rotors properly. So I'm gonna try just punching them in a little bit more to make sure that these rotors are seated properly in the bearings but failing that there is the rather disappointing conclusion to come to which is that the pins on the end of the rotors have worn too much and that play is actually there and um, so we've eliminated the play from the needle bearings but not the tips of those rotors and I don't think that there's anything more I can do with that so then I'm looking at soul searching as to whether I should continue with this particular supercharger, how long will it last if I just use it as is, because it works, but it shouldn't sound quite like that. Yeah, so a lot, lot, lot better than it was before. I'm just not sure whether it's The amount of work I'm going to be going to, to design custom things for this M90, if I find that I'm going to end up having to buy three of these things to try and find a good one, I might as well just buy a brand new Whipple or, or, or equivalent sort of direct drive, which will also fit similar to the Pettit one. I'm not sure. Thinking hard. So these are the bits that I think have overworn or worn over time, if you will. And my only solution would be 
to get them cut off right down here and then drill in drill in a th an opposite thread and then get someone to fabricate something that is the right diameter which has got a thread sort of like a threaded bolt on the bottom of it or grind down a large bolt that is a, like a huge bolt that happens to have a really big head or something so that it is round and of the correct diameter and seriously I'm I'm not sure I'm the right person nor do I have any of the tools to do that and by the time I paid someone who does to do it I'm spending hand over fi money hand over fist for what is a very very bad idea really so I don't think I'm going to do that even though it's an option so I'm going to try as you can see I think the needle bearings can go in a little bit more so I reckon they could go in I mean looking at those marks I reckon the needle bearings could go in quite a bit more so I'm going to attempt to do that just to see if it improves things just push them in another mill or two and see what happens okay so I don't know how well you can see that but what I've done is I've pressed them completely flush I actually pressed them through a little bit and of course that was a little bit too far by accident but I tried it out anyway but they're basically completely flush now so let's put it in and see how she goes all right I'm pretty convinced this is as good as it's gonna get I moved the needle bearings just so that they were just behind flush so we've got the maximum amount of the needle inside the bearing without there being any um, additional touching or rubbing of metal and this is what we got still got that play it's only a little bit but I'm not sure I don't know just don't know what are your thoughts guys let me know in the comments, uh, give me a shout if you've got any ideas or if you think that's a terrible idea it's going to just generate heat and they're going to fall to pieces in 5 minutes. I genuinely don't know.